much, uh, Nita, Sanjay, for inviting me for this and giving me a topic of my immense interest is the cognitive dysfunctions in diabetes. In fact, this has been our main area of studies. Last time I was given a topic by Bansi Sabu on four Ds of diabetes, depression, dementia, delirium and denial, and leading to diabulimia. And based on that, I realized that there are many issues that we don't pay much attention. Particularly clinicians, they look at the sugar, cardiologists, they look at the various aspects of the end-stage problems of diabetes. Now, I am unfortunately in charge of three hospitals in Bombay, which deal with all the problems of diabetes, that is Raheja Hospital, all the problems leading to cardiac problem, that is Asian Heart Institute, and Asian Cancer Institute, which is going to be number one killer in this country sooner or later if you don't pay attention to diseases like obesity, diet, and most important, various aspects which are not studied. Diabetes and mental health, back in 17th century, diabetes caused long sorrow and other depressions. Long sorrow and depressions is the feature of diabetes was realized as early as 17th century. Diabetes and mental health, the interface of diabetes and psychiatry has been fascinated both endocrinologists and mental health professionals. Why? Because both of them make money by not telling the patient, Ki, look here, you are bloody idiot or you are depressed or you are psycho. They keep on changing sugar, they keep on changing other factors. But this interference is very important. It's a very common. This may occur with one another. One may worsen the other. Please realize that the depressed diabetic is difficult to manage many ways. Psychological stress may follow screening of diabetes as well as when the diabetes is first identified. Diabetes and psychiatric disorders share a bi-directional association, both influencing each other. This is very important. Now, type 2 diabetes is most common form. Only 15% cases attributed to type 1 diabetic. Can you open this and give to it? Approximately a third of people with diabetes have a psychological and social problem that interferes with their ability to manage the diabetes. Remember that it's a very important topic. We don't pay much attention in clinician and the endocrinologist clinic. We don't pay attention to this. Unfortunately, many times we face it that after some time, why this fellow's blood sugar is still is 300? Why is he still not losing weight on his abdomen? What is the problem? So you realize that this guy <coughs> is depressed. He's not able to come to terms with his illness. Psychological factors, acceptance of diagnosis. First of all, people don't accept. Amala Knight said diabetes. Denial, uncertainty. Denial and uncertainty created by media. Fear of hypoglycemia. <coughs> Fear of complication and adherence. One of the greatest fear is when the associations meet. All associations meet. Because we don't know all the years what we are telling our patients, we have to tell them, no, Baba, the definitions have changed, the criteria is revised. There is something known as HbA1c kg paradox. Now what is this? You bring down the HbA1c to normal, but the kg body weight increases. Now kg body weight is a bigger risk factor than HbA1c. And today we do with the CGMS, time in range. More importance to time in range. So you just see how many confusing sciences are building up tension in the mind of a diabetologist who cares for his patient, cares for his community. But what happens to the patient and his family? Patterns of co-occurrence of diabetes and psychiatric disorder 
first two can present independent candidates with no apparent direct connection. Second, the cause <coughs> course of diabetes can be complicated. Third, the certain psychiatric disorders like depression and schizophrenia act as a significant independent risk factors for <coughs> control of diabetes. Now you remember when a patient is labeled psycho, schizophrenic or some beautiful names, it's very simple to call somebody as an Indian idiot or idiot is how I, ha idiot hai, akkal nai, mahatar sal lag rai, khulchat, tala gondas nao dile. Gondas nao kai, Alzheimer's disease. The patient also feels extremely respectable. Apla kai, far mota German rog dhele le. This is wrong. What we are trying to create, we are cre creating psychos after normal people. The normal people who live normally, if they don't have these inputs coming from various associations. Think about it seriously. Implications of co-occurrence of diabetes and psychiatric disorder, which impairs the quality of life, increase cost of the care. Most important, the cost of the care goes up. <coughs> poor treatment, adherence, poor glycemic control, increase risk for diabetes-related complications, premature mortality, early deaths, Increase emergency room visits due to diabetic ketoacidosis, higher cost of the treatment, higher frequency of hospitalization, and higher rate of abstinism. Nandia, people are chucked out. Depressed diabetic patients, we have to write a certificate that he is not depressed. Although his salary is cut down by 50%, he is not depressed. We have to tell a lie. The bugger is depressed. I can't declare him depressed. Depression is like a bad word. Diagnosis psychiatric disorder among patients with diabetes, biggest challenge in the management of psychiatric disorders. Up to 45% cases of mental disorders have severe psychological distress. Physicians should be aware of the possible comorbid <coughs> psychiatric disorders likely to be associated with diabetes. And this is what happens with a multifactorial disease like diabetes has a multifactorial reason for depression. The depression could be a feature of dementia, which could be atherosclerotic dementia. It may not be Alzheimer's disease. I tell, shouting to my all medical students, Ki, look here, Alzheimer's disease is known as pre-senile dementia. It is not a senile dementia. 80-year-old man, you can't call him dementic because of Alzheimer's disease. A 45-year-old man, <coughs> and the cognitive function in such persons are grossly affected. Mechanisms that may link diabetes and dementia, multiple. You'll study that in a short. There are diabetes and Alzheimer's pathology is almost three. So you realize that type three diabetes, what is type three diabetes? Type three diabetes, Alzheimer's disease. There is an insulin signaling system in brain. Up till now, people thought that brain organ the neurons are independent of action of insulin. Both low insulin and extra insulin. Low sugar, high sugar. These chemical things bring about changes in neurons and cause <coughs> early dementia. The five D's of diabetes, depression, one of the most serious mental, is a major depressive disorders affect adults above 18 year old. The comorbid depression and diabetes is very difficult to treat. I have already talked to you. Managing depression and diabetes can be successfully treated with person with diabetes. A treatment of psychotherapy with antidepressant medications have shown moderate improvement. Moderate improvement, not too much. But the side effects of antidepressive drugs are too many. What is the dementia, <coughs> dementia and diabetes link? Mechanism of association is not known. High blood sugar or insulin can harm the brain in several ways. The brain depends on many different chemicals, which may be unbalanced by too, many insul too much of insulin. Some of these changes may trigger dementia. High blood sugar causes inflammation. This may damage, uh, cause the damage to the brain cells and help dementia to develop. Reducing risk of dementia <coughs> in diabetes 
what is remember what is good for your heart obviously common sense tells you it is good for your entire body and brain it cannot say it is only good for your heart so what is good for your heart is good for your brain living a healthy lifestyle and promote which improves the cardiovascular health will improve the cardiovascular is is a health of brain as well eat a healthy diet rich in vitamin d folate b6 and b12 vitamins exercise regularly there is no substitute to exercise delirium in diabetes could be manifestation of hypoglycemic episodes or diabetic ketoacidosis patient diabetic suffering from comorbid psychiatric disorders are more likely to explain <coughs> hypoglycemic delirium delirium is associated with various adverse outcomes including increased hospital stay increased cognitive and functional deterioration morbidity and increased mortality features of delirium either hypoactive or hyperactive hyperactive means clinic madhe basle basle ikde tikde he bag dekh ke he karte hyperactive depressed like this like parkinson they come like this as if the whole world is coming to a collapse while well, hyperactive difficult to manage in front of you is handled at least or broken two of your pieces on your table so where hyperactive depressive psychotic comes i clean my table completely <coughs> the other clinical features of delirium include perceptual disturbance such as hallucinations sleep walk cycle disturbance and thought disturbances very very common hallucinations are could be many dr paishe dile hote na to malami this is a deadly hallucination huh? when patient has not paid he feels that he has already paid your fees management of delirium in diabetes main stay of the treatment is correction of underlying cause and supportive care patient low dose dopaminergic antagonist also known as typical antipsychotic could be used to control a behavioral disturbances denial this is the worst problem mala diabetes is nahi tumhala kay kalat nahi doctor goes on too long interferes with your self care and consequently can be very dangerous after you first diagnose with diabetes it's normal at the first to minimize and how they present spotting denial denial has a few catch phases if you hear yourself linking as saying them you are avoiding them one bite won't matter are evda khale kay hot nahi this sore will heal by itself i have seen my father also had it my mother also had it this sore has been there it's a non healing bloody ulcer it can lead to cancer how can you tell him this that i will go to doctor later at aaj nako aaj gudi padbay आज कोई डॉक्टर जो तोड़ बगा आय डोंट हैव टाइम टू डू इट आय डोंट हैव टाइम टू डू इट दिस इज अ फैंटेस्टिक एक्सक्यूज अ बाकी सग टाइम है माय डायबिटीज इज इन दैट सीरियस आय टेल यू इट्स आय ओनली हैव टू टेक अ पिल एंड नॉट शॉर्ट्स पीपल हु टेक ओरल हाइपोग्लाइसिमिक एजेंट्स एंड डोंट टेक इंसुलिन दे हैव फीलिंग दैट दे हैव सम काइंड ऑफ अ लेस सीरियस डिजीज and our doctors are responsible for it huh? some doctors give five drugs six drugs i don't know why they don't start insulin early but people who don't take insulin they feel they don't have a serious disease signs of dis diabulimia khadarpana havratpana regular changes in weight awkwardness or questions about diabetes control or injections avoiding clinic appointments amche kade paus padto hai बॉम्बेमध्ये दिस कॅन गो ऑन दादरला पाऊस नसतो पण परेडला असतो आमच्याकडे पाणी तुंबलं आहे अँड दे ड्राय एअर हॅव्हिंग हाय एच बी एन सी स्किपिंग इंजेक्शन विच कॉजेस हायपो ग्लायसिमिया लो सोडियम अँड लो पोटॅशियम कॅन ऑल्सो कॉज प्रॉब्लेम इन्क्रीज ॲपिटाईट इस्पेशली इन शुगरी फूड्स हाऊ डज डायबुलिमिया अफेक्ट बॉडी blood sugar levels can surge 
and can occur greater risk of ketoacidosis, uh, swings of sugar. If a blood sugar is 200 for a long time, it's not a big deal, but a blood sugar 60 in the morning, 300 in the afternoon, 350 at night, fluctuations of sugars are more dangerous. And that's one cause of eating. Many doctors, like spouses coming and telling, Sir, you have to lock the refrigerator in the refrigerator. You have to eat the refrigerator at night. It's a common complaint. Both type 1 and type 2 diabetes have a reduced performance on numerous cognitive functions. Implications of, sorry, I think we have to go up. Most common cognitive defect in type 1 diabetes is slowing of information processing speed. Now, what is this? Children are taught some lesson. They have to process it to go into their brain and become a protein. The memory is in a form of protein. Like we, I mean, I don't want to say we Brahmins, but at the age of 10, we are all Dashagrandhi Brahman. 10 books learned by heart without knowing a single word about it. Huh? But learning by heart has a better recall in the later ages. Children who are taught their processing speed is very slow. Attention. Attention diverted span can change the processing speed. Worsening psychomotor efficacy, deficit in motor speed. Now, whatever is processed to come out of his mouth, you ask him a question, he has understood it. He's got the knowledge, but to answer it in a proper sentence, he fumbles, reduce vocabulary, reduce constructions of the sentence is the first sign. Now, <clears throat> poor vocabulary and general intelligence, poor attention, deficit in somatosensory examination, poor motor strength and memory. Better glycemic control improves cognitive performance of type 1 improves seen in motor speed, verbal, IQ scores, and most important, the performance in the school. If the blood sugars are well controlled, type 1 diabetics do well in the exam. Cognitive functions are negatively affected, type 2 diabetes, memory short term and delayed, psychomotor speed and comprehension, complex motor functions. Now, complex motor functions, it could be just Buttoning the shirt and wearing a trouser will be a simple act, but the person will fumble for the pant and not button the shirt. It is not a complex art. Forget the complex art of driving and they are not, you know, qualified to do that. Fluency in speech and attention. The loss of speech or ability to talk fluently. I think ability to talk fluently, if Nita keeps on calling me frequently, my fluency will increase. It is the number of type you use your brain, vocabulary, talking. Therefore, to remember one thing, I always tell my friend, you want to learn something, try to teach. Teaching is the best form of learning. And that was helpful. HB1 more than seven, fourfold increase in developing cognitive impairment. IGT without diabetes <coughs> is also a risk factor in cognitive dysfunction. This is a pathophysiology of cognitive dysfunction in diabetes. You can study this slide in detail. That gives the sum total of exactly what I talked all this time. No copyright, you can take photograph also. <laughs> now modalities for reassessment of a cognitive function. New cognitive testing, evoked response potential, EEG MRI, and select PET scanning. Role of insulin resistance and amyloid. Now, this historical brain thought to be an insulin independent, no more thought to be. However, the PET scanning showed significant increase in brain glucose metabolism in a setting of hyperinsulinemia in humans, which may play a role in 
Alzheimer's disease. So this is possibly my last slide. And thanks. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Alka. Come, I'll just make a comment. Because we are, we are running, running short, short of time, time I, I will... will...